Hello everyone, in this session we'll continue to look at the Browse Orders application. So I have a slide here. So on the left hand side I have the application that we just uh, created uh, using the template. And on the right hand side I have the application that was uh, downloaded from the SAP UI5 demo kit. Uh, we did that a few sessions ago, so if you have missed that session, go ahead and watch that. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to go from here, from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and in this session, what we are only looking, going to be looking at is the object list item, so right here, this one. Um, so the object uh, list item uh, on the completed uh, product uh, application has uh, quite a few details in it. So let's look at all the things that we need to do. Uh, so the first thing is uh, the sort order. So right now the orders are sorted in ascending order and in the finished application it is sorted in the descending order. So we need to change the sort order and then the object list item. Uh, so here it has the prefix order. So we need to format the title and then the number. So the object list item has the title as an attribute, the number as another attribute. Uh, so we are going to be displaying the date in a short format. So we need to do that as well. And then we need to look at the first status. So here, uh, I'm, I don't have all of the statuses displayed, uh, but if there is a error or something, then it's uh, in red and so on. So we need to change the state and also the text. Uh, so we need to take care of that and then the object attribute and this is kind of special in the sense that this data the company name is not part of the order entity set so we would have to do some kind of a uh, some kind of a dollar expand to show this data and then we have the title uh, so we have the shipped here and then the ship date. Uh, so we need to take that into account as well. And then the navigation. Uh, so right now the type of navigation, we have navigation here. Uh, we just want to change it to active uh, in the finished application. So this is all the stuff that we're going to do. Uh, in addition to that, what we're also going to do is we're going to look at the UI5 tooling and we are going to do what is called a live reload. So this is really helpful in development cases. So as you're developing uh, the UI I can change uh, and uh, we can immediately see the changes uh, that are being uh, done. Okay, so let's get started. So here I have my application and I also have uh, my application uh, running on this side. So first what I want to do is let me clear the sky and I want to run uh, this NPM, I want to install this NPM package and this will allow us to have live reload. Uh, so go ahead and run this NPM I for install and then the name of the package. This is the name of the package for re live reload. And we want to run this as a dev dependency because this is only going to be used in development. Uh, so we are going to run this uh, NPM package and install it. And in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll show you, I have the custom task uh, defined here uh, for the live reload. Uh, so we want to run this after the compression and we have the debug set to true. We have the extension. Uh, these are the extensions that we are going to be monitoring, XML, JSON, and properties file. And the path that we are going to be monitoring is web app as well. So anything under web app, all these extensions we are going to be monitoring. Uh, so it has completed the install. Uh, so if I go into my package.json, I see there is an entry for the live reload in my dev dependency. Now, as we all know, um, if there is a dev dependency, we also need to copy that into our UI5 dependency as well. And that's what I'm going to do. Just copy this uh, dependency, the dev dependency, uh, into your UI5 dependency as well. Uh, so at this moment, we are all set for live reload and uh, one thing I want to do is uh, keep your uh, application the finished application handy so I have my finished application handy here and what I want to do is uh, go into the i18 properties of the finished application and copy this whole thing this i18 properties for the finished application come in here for this i18 properties and let's go ahead and uh, repaste it now 
uh, I don't have the server running so let me actually have the server running now when I do run the server it's going to run both the, it's going to uh, run my server and also the live server as well so you can see that it's uh, um, we have the live server loading up this uh, application so anytime we make changes uh, it's going to reflect here as well now one other thing we want to do is uh, let's go into the finished application um, and we'll go into the formatter.js um, and let's copy this as well and uh, throw it into the the newer application the one with the template that we are just st starting now the formatter application uh, file itself I'm not going to be really delving too much into it. Uh, it is a bunch of uh, small static methods to uh, format the values. Uh, so you can have a quick look at it. Uh, for example, this function, uh, it takes in a value and then it uh, does a two fix to so it gives you two decimal points uh, so these are like uh, very simple uh, f uh, methods static functions uh, so I'm not going to be looking at it uh, you can quickly have a look at it uh, should be fairly straightforward uh, again the i18 properties as well these are key value pairs so again I'm not going to uh, focus much on this okay so let's get started uh, now uh, for the key part. Uh, so we want to change this object list item. Uh, so again, I'm going to copy and paste this, but this one I'll, I'll explain what is uh, happening. Uh, so here in my uh, master view.xml, uh, what, but what I'll do also is I will keep this running here. Uh, so this is the template application and we see that uh, all it's doing is the title is bound to the order ID and that's how we see the order ID. Uh, but we're going to copy and paste from the original, from the uh, finished application uh, so once I do this you can see that the live role reload is kicking in and it's going to change the UI and you see a whole bunch of stuff here um, so let's fix this order colon slash ID and everything so he, um, so let's see what is happening here um, so in my I the very first thing the title uh, so the title is broken into two parts uh, so it's getting the common item title from the i18 file so if I go into my i18 file and for common item title if I go all the way up I believe uh, so it has order and then a placeholder for the zero uh, so what we have here is we have the placeholder value here and then we have a formatter for this message now um, now we are going to do it slightly different so in the original application it was something like a jQuery something so I'm going to to be, and that's deprecated so we're going to do uh, slightly different and you can check that uh, here in the documentation for uh, this uh, base string so we're going to use this uh, SAP base strings format message um, and the way we can do it is we can have some kind of a uh, module uh, that we can require in our in our uh, XML file so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here and this is the alias so we're going to just say format message here and then the name of the class that we want to use is this the SAP base format message and if I go here and I can put that here as well now this is going to fail um, you can see that the application didn't load and that's because we don't have core so let me also include core in my application uh, so I will copy this and I will call this core and this will be core okay so what we've done is uh, we've defined a namespace named core and then we also want 
this uh, format message. Uh, so previously, if you noticed, there was that order and then the placeholder was not actually being replaced. Uh, but now we've brought in this SAP base strings format message and it's now able to format this, uh, this placeholder. Uh, and like I said, uh, uh, we want to change this formatter to use this alias formatter and then put our alias. Now, in the finished application, uh, it was using some kind of a jQuery, so that is step precated. We should not be using that. Uh, so use this, and this is a kind of a nice concept to know as well. Um, so you want to make sure that we are requiring this modules. We can use uh, modules in XML views and fragments. Okay, so now we have that uh, ready. Uh, so, um, and we have the time, uh, we have the date, and you can also see how the status is uh, nicely formatted in green and so on. And uh, if you go down, there may be some with too late as well, which is in red. Uh, so let's see what happened here. Uh, so we've talked about how the order is formatted. Uh, the date, so we have the number as the order date. Uh, and we have the type and then the format options for date. So this is fairly straightforward. We got uh, we got the date here. And then the object status. Um, so again, we have the state and we have a formatter function. And like I said, I'm not going to delve too much into the formatter function, but this formatter function will provide us uh, the, the state, the color. If you have a quick look at this formatter function for delivery state, uh, you can see that it uh, either returns warning, error, or success. So uh, just have a quick look. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, text, uh, we have some kind of a formatting here as well. We pass in all these values. We go into delivery text. Again, if you go into delivery text here, it takes in these values. It uh, does like some basic formatting and sends us the text. Okay, so I'm uh, again fairly straightforward, so please have a look. Uh, and then the object attribute. Uh, right now, we're not displaying the company name, so we need to display the company name. And like I said, this is something that is uh, being brought in by a different entity set. So again, I will go into my original application. And here, um, the path. Uh, so if you notice, we're doing the path for the orders entity set, and then we are expanding it to get the customer entity set as well. And then the sorter is by order ID descending true. Uh, so we have ascending true, so we are going to fix that as well. And then create group factory. So we'll copy this whole thing into my application here. And I'll keep this on the right side. And this is where it, we are getting the data from. And I'm going to change this to include Along with orders, I also want the customer, the company name as well. So I'm going to add this. And if you everything works well, so we should now have uh, the company name here, which is good. And it's sorted in descending order. And everything looks good to me so far. And the last thing is the object attribute. Again, we have uh, some kind of an expression binding here. So instead of using a different uh, formatter.js, we are doing the formatting right here inside the XML as well. So expression binding, uh, something that uh, you can do for simple formatting. So pr fairly cool. Okay, so that's it for this session. Uh, so we were able to take um, something that looked like this and we were able to convert it into something like this. Okay, see you all in the next session.